Hello and welcome to that channel that uploads once a month and calls it weekly content. Dylan here. Welcome to the second review for Raw, which means we gotta make this a like weekly, or in this case monthly, thing now. <laughs> uh, the second episode of Raw was recorded January 18th, 1993, and that's the only facts that I will have for you this episode. It starts out with a cold open where Vince just introduces us right away to him. Rob Bartley and the Macho Man. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Dang, that, there we go. A little bit better. Uh, Rob rips up a photo of Bobby Heenan, and uh, I don't understand why he just did that for no apparent reason. And then the Repo Man attacks the Macho Man from behind and steals his hat. Oh, no. <laughs> We stay on the shot of Macho Man getting beaten up a little bit too long, in my opinion. And then we go into the, the intro, which is still the Saturday Night Live knockoff, as I'm going to call it. After that, we have one of the many ring ladies, because it is the time period. She introduces us with a sign that says something like, I like it raw, or something to that extent. And this... Match that's coming up is Terry Taylor against Mr. Perfect. Oh, by the way, this is not Red Rooster Terry Taylor. This is Terrific Terry Taylor. What is the difference? One has red hair that is painted and put in a mohawk, I guess. <laughs> um, so I kind of fibbed about that whole fact thing. I forgot about this. But apparently there was a rumor at the time that Terry Taylor was offered the Mr. Perfect role before Kurt Henning. Um... The more you know, really, to be honest, this is another one of those like throwaway matches just to say, hey, here's the talent the WWF has. So some part throughout the match, the Macho Man comes back to the announce table to do announcing. That's kind of redundant to say that. And then he talks about the Repo Man taking his hat. During the match, Bobby the Brain Heenan gets on the phone with them, kind of like how they were doing last week. Only this one, it's not as choppy, so who knows, maybe they figured it out. Like, it's still a little rough. Yeah, you let them know, Pumpkin. It's still a little rough due to the 90s quality of dial-up phones, but not, not as bad, I'd like to say. Uh, it was basically a throwaway just to plug that Bobby... Bonnie? <laughs> that's a like alternate universe version of Bobby Heenan. It's just a throwaway to say that at the Royal Rumble, him and Narcissist will be revealed. I guess Narcissist. Yeah, are you Narcissist? Nah, you're Narcissister. Yeah, yeah. Was that a terrible joke? Yeah. Just a heads up, they plugged the Royal Rumble a lot in this match. Uh, because it was one Sunday away as of their recording time. Uh, that means hopefully if everything still works out as normal plan, I'll actually have a video uploaded this Sunday of that Royal Rumble review. Kind of keep the timeline in plug, so to speak. In plug? Is that what I'm... You, you get what I'm saying. You keep it in line. There we go. All right. Towards the end of this match, Flair comes down and he does, um, he just taunts perfect and distracts him I guess is the way to say it he distracts him long enough for Taylor to kick him out of the ring knock him off the ropes and Flair starts chopping the shit out of him um, after that Flair rolls him in and it doesn't matter anyway because that I guess just typed up Mr. Perfect and he gave Terry Taylor a perfect plex for the win I didn't even rate any of these so I did, did I do ratings last week okay you know what New rule on the old school reviews, no ratings. How about that? <gasps> after the match, he immediately runs backstage after Flair, and we go to add. Come back from said break, and after we have an obligatory woman showing us it's raw, we get an Ico Pro ad, and then an OG, or I guess just at the time, an ad for Slim Jim with the macho man snapping into a Slim Jim pre soundbite era. After that, we come back where Vin Mac is introducing Brett Hitman Hart uh, for an interview. And there's just something, maybe nostalgia, but there's something about the way the, I'm going to say original, I don't know how else to say it, but like the version of Bret Hart's song during this time versus like high quality version of it sounds that it's just like, I think, definitive version of this song. <laughs> Anyways, he's asked about the comments from Razor Ramon last week. If 
you didn't see it, I have that review up. Also, sidebar real quick, thank you very much to the people that got that video over a thousand views. I thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. But yeah, he replies to the comments last week saying that he can take criticism about himself, but once you bring his family into the equation and attack his brother or slap his father, he loses respect for the person. He calls Razor the lowest of the scum, and then he he's cuts a little promo on that, and then he's asked if we should expect the normal stuff or if he's going to switch it up at the Rumble. Brett says that the title says that he's the best wrestler, so he should be wrestling, but at the Rumble, he's just going to beat Razor up and redeem his family's name because he's the toughest, the meanest, and the best. He poses as Vince ends the conversation, and then we go to a pre-recorded message. It's with Paul Bearer and The Undertaker, and Paul says that there's too many victims in Somalia. Oh, yes! Yeah, that's right. We're still plugging the Headlock on Hunger event that apparently on this recording happened Friday. If I make some time, I may just, for the hell of it on Friday, do the Headlock and Hunger event. I don't know if that was, like, televised or what. But uh, if, we, if we can find it, you know what? Why not? I'll upload it. Why not? After that, Marty Jannetty comes out. That's right. This is during one of the periods right before he gets himself fired. He's going against uh, somebody. We'll find out after Ed. Yeah, come back from ad, and it's, uh, I'll be honest, I really don't know. They, It's an unnamed talent. <laughs> Vince McMahon keeps on messing up his line, but he tries to say several times that Marty and Sean are going to go one-on-one -on -one at the Rumble. Uh, they call Sean on the crappy phone, and um, he cuts a great promo, honestly, on, like... It just gets him he talks about he talks about how arrogant he is and he keeps on calling himself the kid during this promo instead of the heartbreak kid. It's an interesting note. So yeah, through this match, Janetti ends up winning in case it wasn't obvious by not knowing the other competitor. Uh, the move, I don't know if this was his new signature or what, but it looks like you would set up the overdrive so like you hook the arm and put your leg over the opponent. But then you sit down. Nope. So it's like a Famouser, but if you grabbed the arm instead. Uh, but yeah, he wins the match with that. After that, they plug the Rumble for the umpteenth time tonight. Yeah, that's right, Tonkin. You and I both are getting tired of those Rumble ads. Then after that, they set up a transition to where on WWF Superstars, Crush gets beaten up with a prosthetic arm by Doink. Honestly, I should start reviewing WWF Superstars eventually, but you saw how long it took just to get, like, episode two of this. Come on. Come on now. Do you expect me to review everything? Who knows? Maybe one day I'll watch Superstars since so many important segments happen, but I don't plan on it right now. You know what? Let's set goals, why don't we? If you want to see reviews of WWF Superstars, I'm not talking about, like, the TV show that they aired from, like, 2010 2009 somewhere in that ballpark to maybe even current day i'm talking about like this og wwf superstars if you want to see that um get me to i don't know like 100 subscribers by the end of the year and i'll review wwf's edition of superstars why not all right after the ad we get a wwf mania ad plug and then they plug Another thing where they go to picture in picture and it's Sean Pattengale saying that he found the Repo Man. Uh, the Repo Man comes in a shot after Macho Man's like, ooh, where is he? Even though it's clearly like in like the front parking lot or something like that. Uh, the mic they use for Sean cuts in and out during this. Like you can tell there's a lot of production issues. I'm so glad that eventually, uh, I can't think of his name, but the guy from the NBC network... The, is it Dick Ebersol? I think that's who it is. I'm so glad when he teams up with Vince to fix these errors. <laughs> but ultimately it ends with Macho Man challenging the Repo Man to a New York South street fight on the next episode of Raw. And after the, uh, that, Savage leaves to find him backstage. We then go to a Royal Rumble report from Mean Gene Okerlund where it's just a pre-recording and he plugs the Rumble and goes over the card. During that, uh, one of the noteworthy like 
pre-records is from Razor Ramon, where he says he's going to have gold everywhere. <laughs> that was a terrible Scott Hall impersonation. Zero out of ten, Dylan. Meanwhile, back at Raw, do 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 do. <laughs> They do like one a crowd shot, and then they send us to Sean Mooney, where the Macho Man tries to find the Repo Man in the parking lot. Man, we then go to the ring with Ring Girl number five, and then we get the El Matador Tito Santana Arriba versus Ric Flair with his like WWF version of his theme. It's always interesting to hear that version instead of the actual version because I'm like. Oh yeah, they did have to use a different theme instead of Space Odyssey's song. That's interesting. Alright, so that match ends with Mr. Perfect coming out to repay the favor from Flair earlier. They get into a big brawl, and then a commercial happens. Vince was supposed to get a word in with Flair. He just runs over to where Vince is and says he wants Perfect next week. And the one stays, one goes. That's right. We have a loser lease town match, New York Street Brawl, um, post Rumble event, and one other thing. That's right, Pumpkin. I'm excited too. Commentary tries to transition back into things, uh, but before they can do that, Perfect comes out, says his piece, and accepts the challenge for next week. I don't understand why they didn't, like kayfabe wise, why they didn't fight when they met in the ramp when they were kind of like passing each other, but whatever. Uh, Vincent asked Perfect why he needs that match when they're both two great athletes. And he said, if that's what it takes to beat Flair, then so be it. Vince wraps everything up while saying bye, but then we transition to a like post-show segment like last week to where Repo Man's pulling off with Rob's card and things. During the whole show, Rob is trying to tell this joke where he's like, Hey, has anybody seen my car? And I guess that's the payoff for it. And that's how we end this show. So, what did I think of this week? I think they started a formula, and they're rolling with that formula. And I mean, it's not the worst of formulas. It's just that it's an hour-long show. There's not that much you can do with an hour or maybe it was an hour and a half. I don't know. Point taken. There's not that much you can do within an hour. And I can't wait. Even though I complained about it being like two to three hours long later on. I can't wait until we gain an extra, an hour, an extra hour at least. Um, if this was like a variety show like WWF Mania. Like maybe I could be, I could be excited for it and understand why they had it how they are. And maybe if this was like the 90s and I was flashing through stuff on my CRTV, I could be, I, I could understand why it's short. You know, not, people didn't watch TV that long at 9 o'clock at night. <laughs> or even 8 o'clock. I don't know when this aired. But point taken, ramblings aside, that is all I have for you this week. Thank you for watching. We should be back maybe friday with the hunger for wherever we're at that that one or maybe saturday with the rumble review who knows who knows anymore if you want to know you know there's a little subscribe button if you want to click it i'd be grateful but no pressure anyway 